Good evening, Indigo Children Radio listen, listeners. Welcome. Welcome back, everybody I see here in the chat room. It's great to have each and every one of you back here. And to those of you who will be listening in the future sometimes in the archives, welcome again. It's my pleasure tonight to introduce one of the most giving people I've come across recently in uh, the short time this show has been around. Robin Littlefeather is our guest tonight, and she's been lending herself as an instrument for healing for almost 20 years now. I'd like the younger listeners to make a note of this, because this is an example to follow, and I admire the dedication that she's showing. Robin has her bachelor's and master's degree in divinity, and is a certified and recognized master of six different Reiki disciplines, which we're going to discuss later on tonight. She's done work at the FMH Regional Cancer Center as well as the Francis Scott Key Mall Wellness Center. And most recently, she's been able to work with Dr. Harold Bob, which you can even look his his work up yourself, and I encourage you to do so, at the Seasons Hospice of Baltimore, Maryland. And there she has helped institute a training program for doctors, nurses, and caregivers in the Reiki Healing Techniques. I would also like you to notice that AbidingReiki.com is her site, and you can pull this up anytime during the show, and I encourage you to do that as you can follow along, become acquainted with Robin and her work, and make a good connection. The other day, I had a great conversation with Robin, and she had relayed to me a fantastic story that she's going to share with us tonight. Robin, it's a pleasure to have you here on the show. I've had several people tell me how excited they were about tonight's show, and I want to welcome you. And we would definitely like to hear the story that you have told me the other day, if you would please, and get us a little bit acquainted with how you got started on this path. Uh, Yes, hello, how are you? Uh, Well, uh, basically, uh, my story actually starts in 2000. Um, I had had quite a number of surgeries starting in 1992 on my back. And um, by the time 2000 rolled around, it was already a third surgery. Uh, During the time of this particular surgery, it was quite serious because the lowest part of my back was involved, the lowest disc. And that disc is near a bunch of nerves that enervates everything from the waist down. And uh, there's a disease that goes along with this that's called cauda equina syndrome, and they call it equina because of all the nerves that are bunched at the tail of the spine. And uh, in my case, the disc had herniated to the point where it severed the sciatic nerve, and it was quite large and quite serious, and they went in after it. And um, during this time, uh, I believe they told me I died on the table. I uh, think for, you know, several seconds. I really don't know how long. Mm -hmm. Um, I do know that I had thought I had seen it because I relayed some things to the doctor later, and he seemed pretty surprised. He said, you shouldn't have known that. You were under sedation. So um, basically, when I came out of the sedation, there was almost a little to no feeling in the right leg and certainly not very much on the left. And uh, I thought, oh, this can't be very good. And they basically said, uh, it's not really good at all. Uh, there were a lot of nerves that were affected by this. Uh, one nerve had adhered to the scar tissue and had to be peeled away, and it was just a mess. And they basically said, I don't know if you're really going to be walking or functional or what, what's going to happen with you. We're just going to have to wait and see. Well, you know, at that point, uh, I didn't know quite what to do with myself, and I went through quite a bit of sadness and uh, the usual stages of grief and anger over the situation. And uh, during this time, a friend of mine called me, and she said, listen, um, I do some Reiki healing would you be interested? And I said, what is that? And she said, why don't I show you? And I thought, well, I mean, what do I have to lose at this point? So she actually started coming while I was still in the hospital and uh, worked with me over the course of quite a number of months. And what I can say about it was that slowly but surely, not only did my function start to return, 
but the emotional stress and the components that go with it of pain, uh, post-op, uh, having to take medications, which were pretty rough to take to deal with the pain, all of that seemed to be a lot less when she was doing the Reiki. The medication worked better. I didn't need as much, and I seemed to be healing more rapidly. In the now, um, I'm walking just like everybody else. And I do really think that Reiki had a significant impact on my abilities to do what I do. Um, to this day, I still do not feel one leg. So the fact that I'm walking, I think, is even more attributable to Reiki because there should be no reason. And when I go often for checkups and they check my reflexes, mm -hmm. there are none. So what can I say other than I really think that for me this modality did something unusual and special. But more importantly for me, it was a new beginning. It almost set opinion for me. It was almost as though this is going to be a basis. We are rebuilding from the ground up. And this is going to be everything that you build on from here. This is your support, your opinion that you're going to be building on. And um, I was really very much excited with the process. So the first thing I did was I went to get trained. So I went to a local person, and it's kind of interesting how these things work with kismet, but um, I went to a person in Gaithersburg, and it was run by a man named David Legal and the Ricky Center of Greater Washington. And I started to call him up and talk with him, and we had incredible amount of things in common, including uh, Native traditions that we practiced. We also came from other traditions, and both in the same traditions together, religious traditions. So it was very interesting that I would pick this particular person. And uh, we started uh, learning together, and uh, basically, finally, I did get my master's in Usui in 2000. Uh, in Sedona, of all places, uh, it was quite an experience. <laughs> and um, I just began to fall in love with this thing. It was just the most amazing modality that I could really s spend all day speaking about. Um, it was emotionally supportive. It was spiritually supportive. It was physically supportive. And it gave me an opportunity to work with other people and to reach out. Because having been in the shoes of somebody who has been disabled, I know what that's like. I know what it feels like. I've been in those yeah, shoes. Yeah, powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I found myself just basically throwing myself into the thing. Um, once I got um, my uh, Reiki mastership in Usui, I decided, well, there's just more to this. I want more. It's, it was like I couldn't get enough. So uh, initially, the Usui is the first kind of Reiki most people get. It's the Western Reiki. Um, now, basically, what I want to just give a little history of what Reiki is for people who don't know. Oh, um, yes. Reiki... Reiki was discovered by Dr. Usui, and uh, he had this uh, during a mystical experience on Mount Kuriyama, which is a sacred mountain north of Kyoto in Japan in March 1922. Now, there are a lot of different stories about this man, and we really are not quite sure which ones are true. Some people say he was a Buddhist monk. Some people say he was a Christian. Some people say he was a Buddhist monk and a Christian. We really aren't sure. Uh, basically, uh, he had gotten to a place in life where he kept saying, I don't understand why people need to be ill. There's got to be more than this. And, you know, he had heard about Jesus and how Jesus had healed, and he was very interested in how is it that this, this man Jesus could heal and I can't. And he spent many years looking at healings and why they occurred and how they occurred and um, just really wanted to know. 
And that's what more or less led him to this mountain. And he just basically decided that he was going to go on the spiritual quest and figure it out. And apparently when he was on this mountain, he had this revelation which he then brought down. What this included was a sort of a hands-on thing where basically you're laying your hands on the person almost as though you were praying for them. And you are using certain symbols that he was given, and they're Japanese uh, kanji symbols, and they basically uh, innovate or sort of focus whatever your intent is to work on a client. So that's uh, pretty much in a nutshell um, how this began. Um, now, as it's gone along, uh, there's been more and more things that have been added to this. Um, Initially, when Dr. Usui worked, he worked mainly in the head area and um, the throat area, and uh, there was very little below the head. And to this day, if you're uh, doing, say, Japanese Reiki, you're working mostly around that area. It's very rare you're going to work below that area, whereas in westernized Reiki, you're working from head to toe. Uh, now, there are areas in Japanese Reiki where you actually do work head to toe, but you're usually working in tandem in a group, for example, rather than one person. So there are differences within uh, the Reiki genre, shall we say. Um, for myself, I started with this because most people do. It's, it's the easiest one to learn um, and certainly the most notable of all of them in terms of what people understand and know about Reiki. Uh, Many people say to me, well, is it a religion? And I would say, no, it is not. There's nothing that is religious about this. It's basically a system in which we're working with the energetic field of a human being by the laying on of hands and our intent and these particular symbols. The way that this is passed from Reiki Master to Reiki Master is, again, with the laying on of hands, and there are certain stylized ways that you do this. And this way, it is passed from one person to the other person to the other person. It's not normally something that you would just pick up a book and do. Uh, there is a process where they call an attunement. And what an attunement basically is, is that you are doing the stylized or ritualized way of kind of making that person um, sensitive to the symbols and, and imparting them to whoever it is that you're imparting them to, if this makes sense to you. Um, and also in Reiki, and this is similar to chiropractic, uh, it's very much uh, involved in the spine. And what they'll say is that there are seven different places along the spine that we're going to work on. Uh, some people call them chakras. Some people call them energy vortexes because oftentimes these places along the spine will have a kind of a, a whirl to them. Uh, some people it's clockwise, other people it's counterclockwise. It really depends on the individual. Uh, what a Reiki master can do is uh, by the use of their hands, they can kind of like feel along the spine and see where these energy places are, see which direction they're going, tell whether or not there's something wrong with them. The theory is, is that if there's something blocked or something's wrong or something's spinning the wrong way, uh, if we get it moving properly, that is going to give the body a chance to sort of reset itself and begin its own healing process. So that is Reiki in a nutshell. Um, now for me, once I started with the Usui Reiki, I went on to different types of Reiki, and it's, it's almost like going to Baskin Robbins and you've got 20 million flavors and uh, there are quite a number of flavors of Reiki and they all do different things and they all have different focuses. Uh, for example, there's Sakem Sakim, which is another thing that I, I do and that is a Egyptian Reiki and it's by uh, Patrick Ziegler. And in this Reiki, it, it's much more, um, I don't know how to put it, very emotional. I, I would say that would be the word. It works on emotions, and it's it's very intense and very deep work. Um, then there's Lightarian. Now, Lightarian, unlike most of these other modalities, does not have any symbols. And it's basically this very light, gentle type of Reiki. And I use it a lot with clients that are ill or dying or, or just too sick to receive anything else 
and it is it's a, it, it basically works for the client's highest good. So we have that. Uh, there's uh, Gendai Reiki, and I am a Gendai Reiki master, and that is a whole other ball of wax. It is Japanese in origin. It's almost in some uh, things similar to Tai Chi or Qigong in some of its uh, the way that it works and some of the uh, actions that you'll see that these Reiki masters do, uh, working from the head to, say, the middle of the body rather than all the way down. Um, I would say that was probably the most exhausting of all the Reiki that I've taken. It, it's just, it's, first of all, there's at least three huge big manuals that you're going through, and it's a lot to learn. And it's a whole different concept because a lot of it's in uh, Japanese terms. So you have to kind of refocus and relearn uh, almost everything that you just went through to, to uh, sure. learn this modality. And the last one I do is something called Karuna. Uh, karuna Reiki is very much an intoning type of Reiki uh, where you're using your, your voice and sounds along with symbols to basically heal somebody at a much deeper and more cellular level. And uh, very often with this, um, in a session, uh, I may go through all or some or one or two of these modalities, depending on what I think the person is going to need. So it's very individualized. And the nice thing about this is that the person does not necessarily have to do anything except lay on my table and just kind of receive what it is that I'm doing. Uh, usually, when you're on the table, you are fully clothed. Uh, some soft music is put on, and then I just begin and do my thing. And um, I've had some wonderful stories from people uh, that I can certainly share. Uh, so, some of my experiences in hospice in particular have been pretty spectacular and amazing. Um, now, that's another thing. In terms of hospice, when I went to hospice and I started working with Dr. Bob, we both realized that the Reiki that we've been taught is not going to be dealing with dying people because most of the time what you're trying to do is fix something. You're fixing uh, an energetic system. Well, there's no fixing when somebody's dying. So we basically kind of had this thought of what else are we going to do? And what came to Dr. Bob was this wonderful system of basically we are not trying to fix anymore. What we are doing is we're supporting. We're bringing peace. We're bringing calm. We're bringing a kind of equanimity to the situation and focusing our intent on the healing of this person's mind and emotions to be able to let go in a way that is productive and in a way that gives them dignity and in a way that gives them calm and peace. And what we've noticed in this is that the last chakra to die seems to be the crown. So that's where we're working as opposed to working throughout the whole body, which is now shut down. And I believe there is some scientific evidence that when people are dying or in that process, I think their brain and their sight and their hearing might be the last thing that actually vanishes before they pass forward. So it, it makes total sense if you think about it from that perspective, too. That is, so that's where that's really, I'm at. That's really uh, interesting. I've learned so much, uh, to be honest with you, just in the last 15 minutes, um, volumes, and I say that from the perspective of somebody who has just um, barely begun um, to do energy work and not really in a Reiki fashion, but just um, slowly trying to understand what it is. And everything that you said uh, seems to resonate with a level of truth um, because, you know, you get the intellectual facts in your mind and, uh, you know, you, you have yet to experience. And then you hear someone like yourself who has experience I think it's I think it's awesome, and I think it's awesome what you said when you needed to switch the modality for the hospice because we're not reinvigorating a um, is damaged a good word a damaged uh, energy system as opposed to one that's in hospice where we're in just encouraging this to kind of uh, collect itself and move on. 
is that essentially mm -hmm. that's amazing. I, I want to back up a little bit and ask you a question that stuck out to me first, and it stuck out to me when, when you had first mentioned it and you said um, that when your uh, friend had approached you about Reiki and you said, what is that? And she started to practice on you and show you a little bit of what was going on and you started getting results. What I kind of want to ask you at this point in time for the sake of myself and for the sake of the listeners, um, I would say that a fair amount of us have not experienced um, this type of treatment before. I know a couple of people in the chat room have or know something about energy. Um, you said, what is that? So to me that says, um, this is beyond like a faith, this is uh, beyond like a believe it thing, you, you, you weren't already in tune with it yet, it started to work for you. And I know you say there's no guarantees, but for someone to approach you in your illness, for you to ask them what is that question, and for someone to start performing this on you, and for you to get tangible results on the ground zero level, level can you elaborate a little bit on that in regards to that question? Well, uh I would say, for me, um, it was probably within hmm, maybe four to six treatments that I started to notice something. Um, the first treatment that I had, it just felt really relaxing. And given the stress of the surgery and all the emotions of being upset and losing my functions and what am I going to do and, and the grief and the anger, that was a wonderful thing. I didn't have to do anything. And that was a big comfort. So that was more the thing that got my attention. Wow. Wow. I feel better. I feel good. I feel calm. So that was the first thing. Um, within the probably like the third or fourth session, and I remember this distinctly, she was working at my feet. Now, you have to understand, I did not feel my feet. And um, I had my eyes closed, and all of a sudden, there was this twinge, and I went, ouch! And I realized that I just felt a twinge on my big toe, on the right side, of my, you know, and my right foot, and I thought, uh-uh. So I didn't really, you know, I kind of just closed my eyes and said, no, 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 that, that's just, you know, <laughs> you know, no. And, you know, I'm sitting there again, and all of a sudden I feel like another, like, ding, you know. And I looked up and I went, holy, oh, my, oh, my. And I looked down, and I said to my friend, look at my toe. And it was wiggling. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> yeah, so that that was really where it started with this, little wiggle of the toe, and I was like, oh, my God, oh, my. You know, I was just stunned, stunned. And I was, I was like, screaming in happiness, I just moved my toe, I just moved my toe. And it was just such a huge deal. It was like, hello to my toe. <laughs> it was just, and oh. I was just absolutely thrilled with that. So I was like, okay, you got, you got to come back. You have to come back and do more. So for me... I would say it took around three or four sessions. It felt great. It felt comfortable. But in that fourth session, there was something tangible that I could see and feel in an area where I had lost my feeling. Oh, and gosh. it was completely unexpected. Mm. And I'll tell you, if I had just gotten back my toe, I would have been grateful. That would have been enough right there. But as time went on, it spread to the other toes. And um, what was interesting is on the left side, I got back all the feeling. The right never regained its feeling. And there was this thing where I was re almost retraining my brain to kind of put my foot on the ground and look at my foot on the ground. And... I would remember that sensation in my toe and think about the Reiki and something about thinking, even just thinking about having it done to me, set off something in my body mm. to be able to walk. 
And I, I can't explain that other than that's just what happened to me. Mm. And it just, it, it brought such an excitement to me, and it brought this sense of, uh, okay, th there's more to this than meets the eye. This is, this is impressive. This is impressive. I, I feel like asking you at this time, and I, and I really want to get um, your take on this, I, I personally feel like asking you when you, when you feel like the, the, you're starting to feel something tangible in your toes, would it make sense to you if I said I felt like saying, is that um, your soul or your consciousness kind of uh, reanimating this body suit that we're wearing? I personally believe this is just merely a suit, you know, uh, so that we can experience, you know, the, uh, the, the jug of juice and the, the cereal bowl, et cetera, et cetera. Would, would that make sense to you on any level if I asked you, um, do, do you think maybe that's what, what the body is like, oh, you know, oh, let me just kind of like slide back into this toe real quick. Does that, does that make any it, sense it at may, all? It may well be. It may well be because we are more than our bodies. We are body, soul, and spirit. And um, I think that there may have been a connection that was made between our body that we don't see that's obviously always whole and the one that we see that may not be whole necessarily. But more impressive, there were electrical connections that were being regenerated from whatever this spirit connection was or whatever happened there. So that was impressive to me. Mm. Yeah, that's simply amazing. Now, I'd also like to ask you, because I think the second thing that you said that really warrants a good question is when you start learning under a new master, and you were talking about a lot of this is, is imparted to you as a student um, by way of the hands, you know, the teacher's field entering your field. Oh, my goodness. To me, um, at my understanding of, of things, this to me was just saying there are, like, worlds of information out there, and this is one of them that uh, is just so above and beyond the normal learning and communication. This, this must be something on a truly spiritual, intimate level. Can you elaborate a little bit about what it's like to, um, you, know, uh, be, you know, be a, a, a student and have uh, you know, this, this information imparted to you in this fashion? Well, it, it was kind of interesting. For me, um, when he did his first set, first of all, I had to learn the symbols. But that, that's an aside. But before I even learned the symbols, he said, I'm going to give you this attunement so that you're actually going to be able to work with this energy without the symbols at first. OK? OK, fine. So I'm sitting in the chair, and he's doing this attunement and he's doing the stylized, ritualized, for lack of a better word, dance. I don't know what else to call it. And he's, you know, he finishes his thing, and I say, okay, I don't feel anything. What now? But here's where it came. He said, remember when earlier on we told you to put your hands together, and, you know, if you take your hands and you put them together and you don't quite touch them, you can almost feel this little static between your hands? Yes. Yeah. I said, yes. okay, well, I, I understand that. He said, now, what I want you to do is I want you to put your hands in that position so you feel the static, and then think Reiki on and blow into your hands and tell me what, what happens. So, okay. So I had my hands together, and I blow into them, and it just felt like suddenly my hands were being pushed apart. And it got bigger, and it got bigger, and the next thing I know, my hands are like all the way out to my sides. I could still feel it growing. I was like, Oh, my gosh. So for me, that's what it was. It was this moment of, aha, a light bulb went on. Again, it was a tangible thing for me. And when he placed his hands on me at first, there was, I, I, I didn't really sense anything. But afterwards, having done the previous exercise, that was when I could see the difference. Because suddenly there was this energetic field 
that had been really tiny that we can all feel between our hands, but it wasn't tiny anymore. It was exponentially grown. So there was that. The other thing that was interesting is um, I would say that night and the next day, it was as though there was just this feeling of like, this buzz, <laughs> for, but not not like um, I don't know how to describe it, but a literal buzz, like like this is in my fingers and in my hands, and I said this is the strangest thing. It it just kept buzzing. So um, the the actual attunement process was kind of almost for me. The first one was uh, I I just didn't really see much, but it was the after effects. Now, what I noticed with subsequent attunements was that I could feel when this was imparted, and how do you explain how do you feel it? Um, just this sense of something new has been added um, in the back of your head. You just you feel something different. Uh, unfortunately, I can't. A little bit of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. It, yeah, it's hard to quantify, but you know something has happened. Um, there would be the sense in the pit of my stomach, um, this feeling of something new, something different is changed in my in my body, in my spirit, in my presence, so to speak. And then usually one or two days later, something would happen that would say, oh yeah, okay, that, that makes sense. Uh, so what, uh, what I also noticed is that, and this has happened with a few of my clients, uh, you feel a little spacey. Um, usually it takes a while to sort of get your footing when these things have occurred, so you might feel a little spacey or a little bit out of it for a couple of days. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I usually tell people when they have an attunement, might want to have somebody drive you home and stay stay there for a day or two because it's going to it kind of kind of disjoints you at first it's almost as though your molecular structure or your energetic structure is being rearranged and um i don't know if anybody has been to australia but when i went to australia i went there to visit some friends everything there is different and the first thing that happened when I stepped off the plane is I was so dizzy I could barely stand. And the toilets are going in the other direction. And, and your, your sense of direction is totally discombobulated because the magnetic field is different there. And I'm not mm -hmm. the first traveler who's experienced this when you go to Australia from where we are. And it was almost similar to that, except I'm not going anywhere. Does that help? Yeah, it does. It's, you know what? Just as an aside, it's so interesting that you say that because uh, uh, tonight, today, earlier today, a visitor of ours, a friend, friend from Australia, actually was here today in discussing exactly how different the simple vibe was here on the northern half of the, the hemisphere. Very interesting because this, this occurred today, about three hours ago. Um, but I think that I can definitely understand um, what you're saying, and I think that uh, when you're describing possibly um, the energy, I want to ask you a question. I, I think that I have received energy from someone intentionally, and I didn't know what to make of it at all, actually. Somebody says, I'm going to send you energy, okay? And uh, mm -hmm. uh, being the type of person that I am, um, I just try to simply suspend uh, any uh, si any kind of self criticism and whatnot, and when it came through it, to me, the way I the, the way I uh, perceived it to have been was an electrical staticky uh, feeling between my shoulder blades. Yet I don't believe that I was feeling it with the actual skin covering the bones and the, and the muscles and whatnot, it seemed to be an electrical connection making contact with a field that I would imagine, I mean, it's hard for me to say, maybe it was like a half an inch or something away from my body. It was literally like, uh, you know, like on Star Wars, you know, they have those shields around the ship or whatever, and it's like getting hit with this beam. It's kind of how I 
described it, do you feel like that would have been an appropriate, this wasn't a Reiki or anything like that, this was simply someone saying, here, watch, you know? Um, do you feel like, is that is that a common uh, description at all from anyone that you've worked with? Um, everybody's different. That is certainly one way that you might sense it, yes. Uh, I've had people tell me they feel heat, or like you said, that tingly, kind of funny, zetsy feeling that you said you felt between your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Some people get that. Some people will feel cold in a certain place. Um, I've heard people say pins and needles sometimes. I think every person perceives it differently. I certainly think what you felt was probably very valid. My question, and that just from a, a standpoint of energy work, would be when somebody says they're going to send me energy, for, my first question is, okay, well, who are you? Do I know you? Right. Um, that's number one. Then the second question is, what kind of energy? What are you sending me? Right. Not that uh, I necessarily am, am going to be skeptical, but what I will say is, you know, um, you, want, you want to sort of filter because not every energy is necessarily in your best interest either. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'll just kind of filter it. Is that what I want to receive? Is, does that feel right to me? Is that good for me? And if those questions are okay, sure. And one of the things most Ricky people will tell you is when we, for example, I would never go right now and send energy to Obama because I haven't asked him if that's okay. Mm -hmm. All right? In other words, normally a Reiki person will ask, Sure. I would like to send Reiki to you because um, I think it would be good for you or because I sense you need this, 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 whatever. So okay. normally you're asking permission um, to send, but I, I also like to know for myself what, what kind of energy are you sending me. Okay. Uh, my piece, for example, is it Reiki? Is it sacred geometry? What are you sending out to me? Just so I, uh, I kind of have a feeling for that. Okay. But it's certainly valid, yes. Uh, that perception would, would be valid. There's no, in my opinion, there's no perception that you would say that I think would be invalid when it comes to this because everybody's different. Okay. Those are very good questions, actually, and I did not ask those questions. I was um, actually... Um, very well acquainted with the individual, but I didn't actually ask what kind. I think the topic of discussion um, was along an astral energy type of deal, which I'm not sure. Do you make a difference between uh, aura field, astral body, uh, Reiki energy? Is there is there a difference? Well, uh, Reiki energy is Reiki, that that which is a universal energy. I don't know okay. much about uh, astral energy. What I can tell you, though, is that we do have several bodies that we deal with. We will deal with your auric body in Reiki, all right? And then we deal with your physical body, and we deal with your spirit self. And, and oftentimes, um, when a Reiki person is working, they will see something in the auric field that hasn't quite hit the physical body yet. So the idea will be, well, let's deal with that so it doesn't get to the physical body. So in other words, if something's brewing, okay, then I you got might you. see it. All right, you might see it in the auric field because it's brewing and it hasn't gotten to your physical body yet. Let's I, take you know, in terms all. of your question, I don't quite know. You know, I, I, okay. I as far as I, I know, there, there's, a, there's probably would be. I would have to say, yeah, there probably is some difference. Between okay. say an an, uh, uh, an astral pr uh, uh, body where somebody's working on an astral body, uh, an astral plane is different because usually you've left your physical body. You're walking on a different dimension or a different plane, whereas in Reiki you're still in your physical body. You haven't left it. So I would okay. imagine it would be a little different. Okay, I understand, and I and I tend to agree with you. Um, let's go to the phone line here and take a call from from nine four one. How does that sound, Robin? Are you up for a phone call? Sure. It's caller nine nine four one. You're on the air. Please go ahead. Yes. Good evening to you. Uh, uh, great show. Um, my name is Andreas. The accent here is Greek, and I'm into mind body um, approach also. 
Uh, and I want to ask, because first of all, I felt a little bit awkward even to call in because not that I have a problem with talking, but because I was set up the wall, do I know you? No, you do not know me. And uh, and I have a question. Is that okay to ask you a question? Absolutely. The first thing that you ask is, do you know me? You don't know me. Uh, and uh, you may know it once in energy and you know five field and all that stuff. Um, I do believe in the mind-body effect, whatever we feel, we uh, think. I just, I, I humbly, humbly do not like the war between between the two concepts of body against mind and mind against body. The fact that the, everybody tries to make a buck by saying only body or only energy. That is the Deborah Chopra talk or the people who are spiritualists versus the supposedly Western thing. We have the whole people from Japan and uh, India embracing Western medicine that heals millions of people from polio and other people while not even one person has been healed from mind-body, although I practice mind-body. I can tell you that the mind-body makes huge difference. I find very polemic, and I find a great marketing, a very stance marketing, um, and both my way or no way. Either I'm Republican, Red Sox fan, or Reiki fan, or traditional, um, you know, doctor, uh, which hates the things about energy. And I love that. I don't like the word energy, but I like the word emotions. And I do believe that once we think of something, we feel it in our body. We're constantly interfacing and corresponding. We're multidimensional beings. We're not mind and we're not spiritual beings living the physical experience. We're also physical beings generating spiritual experience. So back and forth, but I really believe, and I've seen a lot of my friends out there, they are really desperate uh, to sell and manipulate, and although I do not, by one means, one in a million, um, discount, again, the mind-body effect or the Reiki effect in any way. But I have seen a lot of victims out there that they are desperate in a cancer-less moments of their lives and because they got nothing left to live into energy fuel, and I think that's the best thing that they got left. Really, they got nothing mm -hmm. off. The Western medicine mm -hmm. doesn't offer them much, and the hollow hallways of emergency rooms, they're not very conducive for healing. Uh, the fluorescent lights kill the spirit, and the people really down drain us by treating us as an object. Uh, and mm -hmm. I do believe in that. There is, I'm Greek. There is a nice, nice, nice Turkish guy. His name is Dr. whatever is the name, that guy that goes on the Dr. Chopra show. And because the Greeks and Turks don't like each other, I love this guy. He's a, what's his name? Uh, Dr. Um, everybody knows uh, him. Just like, you know, the Trump. Uh, no, Kupta? no, he's from India. No, no, the other guy, the other who's um, the skinny guy um, who, that goes every day. Everybody knows him. Just like, you know, uh, Obama, you know, this doctor. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not sure uh, the name of it. You know, uh, he's an uh, Oprah Winfrey show every day. He, oh, Dr. Know, Oz? That's Oz, a, he's yeah. Doc, he's, a Turk, he's a Turkish guy, I'm Greek, you know, with, with traditional enemies, but oh, we, gotcha. I love this man. I love this man. I love okay. this man. He, this man is talking about what I'm sure you and all of us will agree. We, in, we integrated beings. We are contradictory integrated beings. What we eat, how we exercise affects the energy fields, just as the energy fields that we feel when we love, when we make love, when we hug, we're in a beautiful uh, state and beautiful after, you know, whatever. We are, we are uh, interfacing with everything. We're metabolizing our realities, our inward world realities and outward world realities. The pizza that we eat, which I don't like, I love it, but I just try to constrain it, as well as our thoughts. I do believe in Reiki. I just do not like the fact that it's a war between these two modalities. We all energy or we all material. I think it's a bunch of bullshit, extreme expression. We are both. And we integrate it is the best way to go about it. That's, well, that's the great why I think you would great love Dr. Point. Bob, because Dr. Bob is doing exactly what you're talking about. He is a medical doctor who was brought up in traditional Western medicine who is Taking the traditional approaches of Western and mixing no, he's not. It he's not. You're wrong. You don't know the man. You don't know the man. I say he talks about integration. He talks about energy and feelings. If you know anything about his work, and emotions and love, 
and all the compassion. I am that. I'm all for that, for energy. But also he, he, did not, he cannot say that we're not physical and the diet and the bacteria and uh, like in India, for example, Reiki could not heal people from malaria. Millions of people were, were died from most, for smallpox. You know, Reiki did not heal them. And uh, with all due respect to you, uh, the biotics did. Go ahead. I agree with you. I, I think your point. I think your point. I is agree with you, and we, we're not disagreeing. And, and, and I believe, by and, the way, that people should not take their life in their hands and just do Reiki. You have to use great, common sense. Great point. Great point. Great point. I great mean, really, point. you do. You have to. You have to use your Western medicine. And I tell people, don't stop you're taking holistic, your medicine. You're a holistic being. What you tell them is you're a holistic being. You need many modalities, and you're right. Right, you need, and you need right, your right. medicines exactly. if you take them. You're supposed to take yeah. them. What I will say, and I've found this to be true, is that what I've noticed with Reiki is that the medicines work better. I have diabetics that I'm working with that are taking less insulin you're a and smart doing woman. fine. What a yeah. great healer. You're a exactly. powerful woman, and you're a smart woman. Not many people are like you. Because Not most very many people are very dogmatic. I, I'll and there are times I've, your... I've sent people to a doctor, I, I, you know, because I know that I am not equipped to handle something, and I will send them right to their doctor. Now, what I cannot do is diagnose, but I have had instances on my table where I've said to somebody, you know what, I don't like the look of this. I'd like you to call your doctor and follow through and you're very have equipped. an Listen exam. To me. You're, very, you're very equipped. You're more than equipped to provide love, which is the ultimate medicine. Don't put yourself down and so as your host there. The ultimate medicine is love and compassion, and I do believe that's what kills people and, and, and people who do not have that. That's the infinite. That's the ultimate. But we are multidimensional. We're holistic beings, and we have, need, have a need, different needs. I, I totally agree with your power and, and your host power, your friend there, which is a beautiful guy, that we all have to work in an integrated, holistic way. And it shows how special you are because you are having the power and the wisdom to know that we're holistic beings. Listen, I want to thank you very much for listening to me. I apologize if I got into your soul like that. Well, no, thank not you at for all. your got input. I really, it was very, very no, important really input. I'm glad you called. Yeah. No, <laughs> my, name very, very <laughs> my name is Andreas. My name is Andreas. I hope you understand <laughs> my accent, my Greek accent, and I appreciate. And you have a beautiful uh, soul, which is the most healing thing of all. And the most wonderful, without the soul, the warmth, the energy, nothing goes. Take care, uh, and good, good evening, and you do have been a great show, and I apologize for popping in like that with my Greek uh, opinions. No, we, we love you. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Caller on line three, uh, 562. You're on the air, 562. Go ahead, please. Oh, I just tuned in, so I'd like to listen to the show before I make any comments. Oh, okay, go ahead. Just um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take you off the air. Feel free, uh, please, go ahead, and if you're in the chat room, you can drop a question in there. Okay, cool. Okay, thanks. Thanks, caller. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Okay. Yeah, well, I just want to... Um, go yeah. ahead, go ahead. Uh, I'm still there. No, uh, I just wanted to mention this. It is very important that even though this may have happened to me, that nobody go and stop their medical treatments. I cannot stress yeah. this enough. We must yeah, right. use our common sense that God gave us, all right? And yeah, I, I would that, very actually. strongly suggest that you stay with your treatments and use Reiki as an adjunct to whatever you're doing to help you. Don't just go and expect amazing healings. What happened to me may not necessarily be the norm. I'm blessed that it happened. But I don't suggest and I don't want to begin to suggest that this is the norm or that it could happen to everybody. And I will tell people there are no guarantees. Stay with whatever you do with your doctor. So I, I'm really glad that that guy called because that's an important yeah, I am too. input to make. You yeah, know. it really is. That's what, that's what the show is all about, and I really appreciate that caller. If you're listening, outstanding. Um, I, feel, I feel like I should have... Uh, I feel like I should have <laughs> mentioned that as well because that was an outstanding point. I got a question for you, um, Robin, here from the chat room coming from yeah. Street Punk. His question is, I'd like to know some of Robin's healing stories. 
Okay, well, I can think of, this actually really is a, a wonderful thing, and it has to do with my own father, and I, I just love to share this because it was so unique and so wonderful. Uh, my father had severe Alzheimer's, and um, it got to the point where he was in the process of passing over. And I was there for the last three or four days that he was on this earth. And during that time, I spent a lot of time talking to him about our past together and all the things that, you know, were special about him and our relationship and on and on. And at some point, um, he had gotten to the place where there was no, no response. He was just staring up into the space. And um, I began to do this process that I'm talking about of Reiki for the dying. And it, we, uh, Dr. Bob calls it Upeka Reiki. That's what he named it. But I was basically doing this process to just basically give him the opportunity to do what he needed to do to finish up. And I was putting my hands on him. And, you know, this went on for, I guess, a good... 20 hours on and off, you know, back and forth, in and out of his room. And I came back, and when I came back, his he was alert, but I mean alert. And he looked me in the eyes and he said, I heard everything you said, thank you. And went back to staring at the ceiling and died about five hours later. Oh, Absolutely the most phenomenal thing. I mean, oh, wow. it was a gift. It was a gift. So that, that's one story that I tell people that I just found the most amazing thing. Um, I had another client where um, she just could not seem to conceive. And it brought a lot of heartache. She had had multiple um, miscarriages. She just, uh, just awful. And, I mean, she'd gone through all the in vitro stuff and, you know, that's nasty. I mean, it's obnoxious and it's it's very hard on the body and... Nothing, nothing, and nothing, and she was just devastated. So um, she had come to me basically to become at peace with the process that she had just gone through. So we started this as basically a healing process for her spirit and her soul, which was just so broken. Mm -hmm. And while this was going on, she decided she's going to adopt a baby, and uh, I think she went to China or something, she gets back, and she's got the baby. The baby was about, I guess, two at the time. Get back, still doing the Reiki. Six months later, wouldn't you know, there she was with her own baby and had it to term. So, oh. you know, yeah, so just, you know, stuff like this. Um, I yeah. had another client that... Um, uh, I basically kept saying, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. There was something going on with her in the heart area, and I kept saying, you know, I don't like this. I don't like this. All right. So I said, oh, do, me, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Go to the doctor, right? So I said, I said to her before she went, you know, it feels like there's a heart valve infection, but I'm allowed to diagnose, so you better go to the doctor and find out. So please go. So she goes to the doctor, and she comes back, and she said, well, I got my test back. And this, this was, I don't know how much later, I forget how long. It was a while, because these tests take a while. I said, and? She said, yeah, there was an infection. And if you hadn't sent me, I might have not be here today. So I don't know. They, they did something to treat her, and she, she, I mean, went through a process. It was pretty nasty, but... I think she was eventually okay. So that was pretty amazing to me, you know, right there and then that something like that would happen. And it was, you know, that's there's an instance in which I wouldn't normally open my mouth to say something, but it's like uh, something's not right. Um, I, I've had a I lot of interject people do real quick, healing. Robin, sure. I, I just want to tell you we've got um, five minutes. There was another okay. question in the chat room about animals, but I wanted you to take – about uh, using Rika on animals, but I want to let you know we have five minutes, and if you could use that five minutes to talk a little bit about how um, people can get in touch with you for consultations. Sure. You service a wide range of areas, people, and I know, I'm looking at you right now, you're in the chat room, you're in that D.C. area, 
Okay, so she services a wide area. Please tell us a little bit about that, Robin, and how people can get a hold of you so that we don't just lose you real quick. All right, well, you can get a hold of me at www.abidingreiki.com, which is my website. And I dropped that in the chat room. Yeah, there it is. There's a link, people. Go ahead. And then you can also, um, my office number is 301-696-9676. Uh, you can also reach me at um, feather, F-E-A-T-H-E-R, at abidingreiki.com. What was that number again, Robin? 301-696-9676. And it's also on my website. The number is on my website, as well as my emails. So those are okay. the best ways to reach me. Okay, and yes, and I you just can do Reiki to... on animals. I've done it, and my dog loves it. <laughs> oh, fantastic. That that question came from Light Tree 2012. Um, fantastic question. But, um, you know, I just I didn't want to, you know, all of a sudden, oh, boom, show, gone, over. Um, Robin, we have a couple of, uh, a couple more minutes. Do you think that there's, well, I'm, I'm sure that we could go on and on and on. We have here three minutes. Anything that we missed, anything you really want to get out there and get off your heart, anything you think somebody in the chat room or listening or in the future listens needs to hear um, about Reiki energy, um, what what would you have to say? I would just say it's a very compassionate modality, and it works well with your existing medical issues. It is a great adjunct. It is a great addition. It is a wonderful thing to support you emotionally and mentally and spiritually no matter what you're going through. And it certainly is worth the experience to have. Yes, Robin, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. I'm sorry that one hour goes by so quickly. There's so many questions that I could ask you, um, so many questions that the people here could ask you. And um, I really encourage everyone to visit her website, to visit her YouTube channel. You'll find both of the links there on the station page. Those links will never go away. Anyone who visits this uh, radio show in 10 years will still find those links. And I encourage you to uh, become acquainted with Robin. Um, It's, like I said before, a sincere pleasure from us, myself. Um, I really wish we could go on. I thank you so much for giving giving us your time tonight. And uh, all the information you give me, I just have so much going through my head right now. I'm going to leave the headphones down more excited than when we started hearing what you have to say, and hopefully I get that opportunity to kind of pick your brain in the future. Well, I'm really glad to have been a part of it. Thank you. I thank you so much, Robin. Um, We're going to close the show out now. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Robin, if you want to hang out in the chat room, there will be people there. If not, you know how to get a hold of her. You know her website. I'll be in the chat room for a little bit. Thank you, caller, very much for your your call. Thank you, other cob. And Jungle Cat in the chat room says thank you very much, Robin. Thank you, everybody, for participating, and thank you coming back for the show. We appreciate it. Good night. We'll see everybody here.